Hey, Jamie. Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? How you doing? Good. Let me just uh, introduce you to everybody real quick. So, Jamie, this is, we've got uh, Charlie. Hello, me. Hey. We've got Amy. Hey there. And we have the Clydesdale hey. himself, uh, Scott. What's up, Scott? How you doing? So, I Jamie. Clydesdale, and I was pretty excited because we call ourselves CrossFit Clydesdales. There you go. <laughs> You're I'm not a alone. taller athlete, so, you know, moderate. Yeah, tall is not my issue, but, but we'll go with it. <laughs> I've, been, I've been this weight since sixth grade, so I understand carrying a little bit. Um. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Jamie, we wanted to get you on here to talk a little bit about um, the Masters Fitness Classic, um, give our listeners sort of a taste of what to expect. And um, I think Scott and I are planning on joining you, so uh, go ahead and just give us the lowdown. If you would. Well, I mean, it's it's actually something that kind of came out of uh, a lack of coverage. Um, so initially, we started this whole thing because of one of our buddies went to the games and and wasn't we weren't able to watch them. I mean, that's the whole point is to be able to see your 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 friends and your and your the people you care most about at the pinnacle uh, of what their goals are. So um, we started MFC from that, and then from there, honestly, this came out of nowhere they started to cancel the games and we were like we can do this we can put something on we have four members that um that uh are pretty resourceful um and then from there we uh we picked a place and and picked a date august 20th through the 23rd and, and decided to put on something that was going to be special so i saw the map of the layout is it going to have like a regional type feel with the layout I think that's the fun part. I think everyone's been missing regionals. Everyone to hashtags rip regionals. Uh, I went twice. It was, it was a blast. So yeah, it's going to have a same feel as regionals, which is going to be pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, it's, it's got that kind of like off site feel too. So we're going to have Thursday is going to be athlete only. It's going to be a, a run and a lift and a swim. So, um, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I think everyone's going to enjoy it. And I think the masters are going to feel like they don't get put last now. Um, I know the teens kind of felt that way too in, in there and the pit ranch is doing a great job with them. But for us, you know, we wanted to make the masters feel special because you know, this is the group of athletes that, you know, they were at the games in 2010, you know, they have been at the games, especially the 35 to 39s. Um, and now the 40s to 44s because everyone's aging up and, the talent pool is just getting so deep and we wanted to really celebrate that. When I saw some of your confirmations, it looks like you have a lot of the big names in the master's field. Uh, are there still some coming in or are you, are you pretty much set on your lineup? No, we actually, uh, we still have some coming in. I actually just confirmed with the games guy um, right, just right now um, for the 50 to 54, but we're also putting on a little qualifier um, that's going to be kind of fun. It's going to give people the opportunity who didn't do the open to, um, to maybe compete against some of, of these top masters. And maybe they are top masters. Like I didn't do the open this year. I was injured. There's a lot of people that were that in that group and that they have a shot now. So I think it's going to be fun. So Jamie, the reason why you're, you say that they didn't do the open is because that's how you originally got, your your cast of of athletes right you you picked from the, the open the and the, open, yeah so we went group. through the open and then the age group online qualifier um so we, we started with the top 10 and then we expanded a little bit because of international uh and obviously right now traveling i can't even go see my mom in connecticut from tennessee uh there's like a ban on that so you know canada uh international europe that's going to be very tough so we filled back we backfilled a little bit from there uh, and then, you know, we're going to open it up a little bit for a qualifier for a few spots. Cool. And then um, what about volunteers? You guys are still looking for volunteers as well, correct? I mean, you're, oh, we're always looking for volunteers. The, the great thing about the community is, uh, especially in Fort Wayne, is that there's five gyms in that area that are, there's going to be about 300 volunteers. Um, so for us, we'll always take more volunteers. Anyone who wants to come sign on and, and enjoy that, you're going to get something out of it. Um, besides just being able to be a part of this event. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're pretty excited for the, the amount of support that we've gotten in that aspect. So you're running all the traditional um, age groups that are done at the games uh, mm -hmm. with a 65 plus. We added the 65 plus um, 
one of our one of our friends is Dell LaFontaine, and um, he has been the champion for the 65 plus uh, group, and uh, we wanted to make sure that they were celebrated as well. And how many people are you going to run a heat? Is it going to be 10 a heat? Um, how many heats per group? You know, so we're going to do, it's 10 athletes per field in the field. So for 35 to 39 males, it's going to be 10 athletes for, except for the 65 plus is going to be five. Um, so outside of that, it's going to be 10 on the floor. The rig will be 10 lanes and everyone's going to compete on the same floor. So it's going to be pretty fun. And you've, That's pretty got, exciting. An, you've got an official equipment sponsor now? You know what? That's uh, we just announced that. So Rogue is our official equipment supplier. Uh, we're pretty pretty excited about that. Kind of one of those things that's like, all right, so this is kind of legit now. Yeah, it's happening. Uh, so no, we, we we were talking about that for a little while. It was pretty cool. Well, three of us are in Columbus, so okay. we are over by Rogue all the time. So it's it's awesome just for us too because it feels like oh, we're shopping local. <laughs> which we are. I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So I have to say though, you know, just cause this is a whole podcast of masters athletes. So wow. that's, that's awesome. I love that. Um, you know, I think we always participate in the open just because it's something that's such a community thing for our gym, but it's also just nice to be able to, to see yourself stacked up against some of those other mm -hmm. masters athletes. So my question for you is, is there any more chances that Charlie could go ahead and do one of these qualifiers to get in this year, or is it just too late for him? No, the qualifier is actually, it depends on the age range. There's actually a couple age ranges that are um, full. So we, we were doing very well in that aspect, but we're releasing the qualifier tomorrow. So okay. there is a qualifier tomorrow to fill some spaces. So Charlie, you can sign on, sign yeah. up. Yeah. All right. I'm going to film them. I'm going to judge the crap out of them. So <laughs> I got two judges right here. So we're yeah. ready. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. I love it. I think that's going to be great. And, you know, I think we've already gotten a lot of people signing up for the qualifier. Uh, so it's, it's gotten great support so far. Um, so you better sign up. It's awesome. awesome. So and we'll then, obviously, we'll obviously post a link, but where can people go to get more information about the qualifier or the event itself? So Instagram, um, is our, is a really good source for us. Obviously you can go to mastersfitnesscollective.com, um, which is our website, but it's, everyone's on Instagram these days. I've found that when we're tagging athletes for the 65 plus they're on Instagram, um, can't get my parents on Instagram, but you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can go to our Instagram page, which is Masters Fitness Collective. Uh, there's a, in the link tree, there's one of two things you can sign up for the qualifier or what we really want you to do. You can do both. You can sign in and do the survey that we have in there. What that's going to do is going to give us a lot more information and we can keep you up to date on what's going on with us. That's awesome. Yeah. We'll make sure that that link is below when we post this. Awesome. No, and thank you so much for joining us, Jamie. Yeah. It was a way, good way to kick off our podcast this week. Well, I appreciate you guys having us on. Yeah. I'm so excited to be in Fort Wayne uh, in August. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a good time. I'm telling you, no one's ever said, let's go to Fort Wayne, but now we're going to start saying. <laughs> <laughs> we have a reason. Awesome. Exactly. Well, thanks, Jamie, so much. You have a great night. Yeah. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Take care. Cool. So that was Jamie Free. And uh, yeah, Kat and I are going to be judging at the Masters Fitness Collective. That's so what I meant to say there. Mm -hmm. They need to think about a name. <laughs> MFC, baby. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Good time. And they have a lot of uh, big name sponsors too. Bear Complex and, you know, they're going to have a vendor village and, and all that. It's going to be like a little mini games. It's going to be cool. Yeah, I actually talked to Jeff Gobel today, one of our previous guests who was the number one seed going into the 50 to 59 age group. And he is stoked to be able to get on the floor uh, and finish what he started. Uh, he said it means a lot because when he looked at the field, all the big names are there. So it's going to be like competing at the games uh, and, he, and he'll feel satisfied with how he does there. So do they think, I should have asked this before, sorry, I didn't think about, but like, what are, are they thinking that there can be any spectators? Yeah, there's going to be spectators. Okay. Yeah, the layout has a spectator area, so they're anticipating it, I'm, I'm guessing. Sweet. So speaking of competitions, if you think the Masters Fitness or Masters Fitness Collective is going to be intense, man, we got a competition coming your way. It's going to be even more intense. <laughs> we have decided to do a nutrition challenge and 
for this podcast, it will be the ladies versus the men. Look out, boys. It's getting serious. Real serious. serious. So there has been a lot of trash talking going on via text. <laughs> there has been. For the last couple of days, and we haven't even started yet. Just getting started. The ladies are doing like a practice run or something because they're not confident in their methodology. Whatever. But whatever. Well, it hasn't started, but it's actually already over. So <laughs> <laughs> just a formality at this point. Uh, do you do you realize how competitive I am? Yes. Okay. Do you see my face? I'm not scared. <laughs> so Kat was so gracious to put together a little spreadsheet. Uh, where we're going to track certain um, certain things in this nutrition challenge. It's not just a weight loss challenge. Nope. Uh, you can earn points based on how close you are to hitting your macros. Uh, you lose points for drinking alcohol. Amy. <laughs> it's not going to matter. <laughs> uh, you also get points for doing a workout that day. Yep. You get bonus points for doing extra work, Wait, like mobility or... If, if you work out more than once per day. Just one. Just, I'd kill y'all there. We don't, we're, not, we're, not promoting, we're not promoting We're not promoting overtraining either because that can sabotage your weight loss. Okay, fine. You heard it here first. You get 10 extra points if you get wrapped up. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is um, weight loss is not one of the metrics, right? Like weight, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but... Yeah. That is not part of it. Like we're assuming that's all going to happen if, you know, for the people that get the most points. I have a question. I haven't decided whether I'm going to stay on this keto life or not. And I'm wondering, we have to establish some rules around changing macros in the middle of the competition. Cause like Amy's probably may, her macros might change, right? Like she's starting with her nutrition coach and they might change in two weeks. This is a six week long period for, for anybody that's curious. And I don't know if I want to stay on keto for six weeks. So I think we just have to establish some ground rules around if, and when we change macros, like, do we have to communicate them to each other or what is yes. it? Cause it's real easy to be like, Oh, I didn't hit my macros, oh, but I changed my macros. So now yeah. I have my macros. I think you have to say beforehand, like, okay, so let me, let's give a little tiny background here. So I applied for a nutrition challenge with move the needle. And so I was accepted to do that. So once that happened, then I was like, Oh, now I really have to do it. And so since I really have to do it, I decided to rope some people into <laughs> to doing this with me. So <laughs> I think if I like, so if my coach like adjusts them, then if I say to you guys ahead of time, Hey, my coach adjusted my macros, I'm going to be adjusting them. So from now on, yeah, I'm gonna have. Well, to I'm, I'm assuming you would have a paper trail as to that change. Oh, I have plenty of paper trail. Yeah, so that would be fine. But okay. to at the end of the week, go. Oh yeah, by the way, last Sunday I decided. <laughs> uh, right. I was gonna carve up. I hit it. Yeah. But. <laughs> so I, you guys just have to stay on me then, because I don't have a coach telling me what to do. But I'll make sure, like you know, it's every Sunday night or something. If I ha if I need to adjust my numbers, well, I'll adjust. First of all, then. I love the indecision. Right. That is no, awesome. Cat. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I think no. that plays right into our plan. No, nope. yep. flexibility wins, yep. baby. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm using macro stacks, just so everybody knows. Uh, I'm going to yep. plug my macros in there based whatever they come up to be. That's what I'll be hitting um, throughout the competition. I will also be using macro stacks. Because we are a unified team and front. That's right. That's how you win. Yep. Teamwork makes the dream work. You know it. Well, I'm going to be using the Move the Needle app, which is through Healthy, and I'm also going to be using My Fitness Pal. So I have lots of tracking that's happening. Mm -hmm. here. Cool. Okay. I might, and maybe, maybe we should all use My Fitness Pal to put in our stuff and like friend each other so we can see it. Well, not those two because no, you won't do that. That's just too much extra work for them to enter it twice. Okay. Listen, I'll put it so on honor system. Honor system, guys. Oh, they can show us. They can take a screenshot of it and send it to us. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll buy the road billboard and put mine up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Charlie, we need, to, we need you to get a whoop because the three of yeah. us at least can track workouts and sleep Ooh. through the whoop. Um, Does sleep count? Because I don't do sleep. Yeah, sleep. sleep is one of the things. You'll be losing yeah. points on that, buddy. Okay. Wait a minute. Hold on. Samesies. 
If you get less than six hours of sleep, you lose a point, I think. And if you get between six and eight, you get like three points. And if you get eight or more, you get like five points. If we so go this by is the ratings, it's negative one for them every time for Amy. Cool. Okay. Well, then Charlie's on the same. It. So whatevs. <laughs> well, you guys cancel each other out then. That's fine. We're good. Yeah. Well, I have and, a watch that tells my sleep. So okay. I can do that. Do it that way. So we were going to let the others three, join though. in too, right? Yeah. yeah. If you want to. So we're going to make copies of the spreadsheet. We're going to, you know, blank out the names so that you can put whatever name you want in and your friends uh, and you can play along with us at home. And we will put that link up uh, below as well. Uh, we'll put it on Google Docs and make it a public document. That works. Uh, so you can just go grab it. Um, and that way everybody can join in and you can comment to see how you're doing and stack your points up against us. Yeah. And, and remind people of our um, Whoop group, please. Oh, yeah. Whoop. We have a Whoop group called uh, the Clydesdale CrossFit. Is it? Did I change yes. the name? No. It's still the old I'm name. It is the Clydesdale, Cr Clydesdale CrossFitter and Friends. Pa just that. Um, <laughs> and then I'll put the code below because it's, it's a weird code uh, to join the group. And so I'll put that below so everybody can just grab that. And we got a new, a new member of the group this week. Hmm. Yes, we did. Oh, I think, I think another podcast is checking us out to see how we're doing. That gives us more motivation. So Tommy Marquez is now part of our whoop group. Darn it. And he is beating me today in this rain. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, so that, was, that was pretty cool to see Mr. Marquez oh. join our whoop group. I'm, I'm beating him in recovery. So, okay. I got something on him. So. And we're starting Monday or Sunday? Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, 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 Sunday. July 5th. Okay. Day one. So this is the challenging part, you guys. <laughs> I'm going to be on vacation during one of these weeks. So I'm going to be losing points for alcohol. Is it you lose for every drink or just if you drink that day? Every ounce. Every, every drink. drink. <laughs> it's okay. You just have to make up for it in other ways. It's all right. We're fine. Six ounces and six points gone. One box of wine, <laughs> 10 points. If I even remember how much. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now here's a nuance we didn't talk about. So we could, instead of cumulative points over the six week period, we could just do winners for the week. Do, do you know what I'm saying? I think like someone's if, getting scared, but no, 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 <laughs> not necessarily. But we haven't decided that, right? We should just, we should figure that out. Is it going to be it's an all out all six weeks? I one big fat number at the end points. Okay. Sounds good. That works. And you just need to control yourself. We'll be fine. I'm fine. Not Never worried. All right. So now that we've had some fun with that, and again, all the links will be below to join our groups. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit of CrossFit news for the week because stuff keeps happening. It wasn't news, was there? News? Yeah. So uh, our last episode was the day that they named uh, the new owner and CEO. Uh, and since then... Um, I have learned that the reason that it takes so long is the SEC has to approve the sale of the company and that takes 30 days. So uh, we will have a new owner and CEO of CrossFit once that 30 days is up and the SEC has approved the sale. But Mr. Castro, the temporary or uh, interim CEO. substitute teacher uh, has spoken several times this week. Uh, he spoke on a live Instagram while feeding his mule. He, he spoke um, on with Rory and Rich, and they were just peppering him with questions, and he was kind of answering them. And then he went on Tommy and Sean's podcast, Talking Elite Fitness, uh, to, and sat down with them for an hour uh, answering questions as well, and probably was more open about some things uh, than he's ever been since I've been following uh, Dave. So where do we want to start? Well, I didn't see, I've only seen the Tommy and Sean one. I haven't seen the other one, so. So there was some repetition um, through that. Uh, mainly, they asked him what it was like being CEO uh, on the, the Rich and Rory. And, you know, he was a little bit curt that he, I think he really wanted that position. I think he has a lot of big ideas as to what to do with CrossFit. And 
he did implement three things while acting CEO. And those are all moving forward according to him on these, on these different venues. And those are that um, the affiliate regions are going to continue forward. They named a second, uh, the SoCal uh, affiliate rep last week. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who that was. And then they also did a scholarship program, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later. And what was the third thing? I don't remember. Nicole, Nicole came back? Uh, no. Now he implemented one other thing. I can't remember what it was. Dang it. Vacation head. Uh, but anyway, a lot of the questions came around then. What was his role with, with HQ now that Eric was going to take over? And he said that uh, he was going to st now be the director of the games again, but have a lot more flexibility uh, to do things that he wasn't able to do under the prior ownership. Um, and he was also going to help Eric in the transition. Uh, so kind of be at his beck and call to kind of help him through that transition, um, to be owner. And then the question came up, well, what, what changes do you see coming for the games since you're director of the games now? And they asked him, do you, are you going to bring back regionals? And he said, maybe. Hmm. So that wasn't a firm yes, uh, but it, I'm sure he's definitely uh, looking at it. But he did say in that part of the conversation that the Open most likely will move to the spring again. And he said, and he said there'd be no cuts this year. In the yeah, games. if they hold the games, there will be no cuts. Yeah. Uh, he'd also said with the Open moving, it was just because the, the athletes need an off season. Totally. Uh, and that way it gives them a little bit of breathing time before they have to rev everything back up again. Um, he also said that they asked him about media coverage for the games. And at first, I think he misunderstood it and thought like a media team being brought back into HQ. And they kind of clarified and said, no, the coverage of the games. And he said that Eric wants it broadcast to as many people as possible so that the, the broadcast of the games will be f most likely from an outside company. Whether yeah, maybe, be maybe not for this year, but he definitely sort of said like, you know, he indicated that they would get much broader for in years to come for sure. Right. Um, like CBS or ESPN or one of those type type deals. Uh, those were like the big hit things, takeaways I had from it, um, from a specifics point of view, but from an overarching point of view, I, I, I do want to talk about that just from listening to him. Um, again, it's the most open that I have heard him talk. Oh, I remember the third implementation. It was the weekly newsletter to affiliates mm, to open that. communication with the affiliates That's so that good. there was a broader uh, communication. Cause that was my first overarching thing is, Communication. Um, he did, it is the first time he's talked like this, so I love the open communication. Um, but I felt like a lot of it, he's, he's very resentful at the way this all happened. He well, and he, he's afraid. They're back on him. Yeah, and he's, a, he's afraid of that sort of mob mentality, having the power to make decisions, right? I, I think that's, he's sort of like, what's next? Like all these people left. And, and, you know, like acted with their pocketbooks, if you will. And, and we played along and did what they asked. And then they still weren't happy. And we played along and we did what they asked. So now, you know, the company sold. Greg has no interest in it, assuming that's, that's how it's going to go. And then I think he's afraid, like, well, what's next? You know, if we, do, if we screw up again, are people just going to leave and threaten to leave and make us change? And I get it. It's a slippery slope. Um, and I... I was glad that he was vulnerable enough to talk about that because it's valid, valid concern. Uh, <laughs> I think like, I think he misrepresented what actually happened. He said that 
you know, they wanted him, to, Greg, to step down. Greg stepped down. Then they made another demand for him to leave. I don't think there was ever an incremental to that. I think that the people who said, I'm leaving, wanted Greg out as owner from the get-go. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't necessarily, you're, you're right. It wasn't necessarily a two-step thing, but I think he's still thinking like, what's next? Right. Well, you know, and, and that's, and unfortunately that's just the business that they're in. If you have 16,000 customers, right. And, and they choose to, you know, make noise. You you have to listen kind of, right. I mean, that is the business world. Yeah. CEOs get removed all the time. Mm-hmm. So, so I watched the Tommy and Sean one and not all the way. And um, Charlie and I briefly talked about this the other day at, at the gym but I, I found Dave, yeah, I think he was very vulnerable in there. I also find him in a very challenging situation because I think he knows Greg better than anybody else, like work, working wise there. And I could hear in him the, the internal struggle of wanting to, to defend him for, for what he has done as, as far, I'm sorry, for what he has it brought us as far as CrossFit. So I could hear this struggle with wanting to defend him for that, not, not defending his actions as far as, you know, coming out and, and saying some of those things and, and somewhat of the culture, but I could really hear him wanting to defend him in that sense. And so I really, again, I don't, I'm not saying that I support what, what Greg, um, the culture that he brought there as, but, but I just thought, you know, he really does know him better than, than any of us here. And I think that that, it just was an interesting, you know, side to, to Dave, just to kind of listen to that and hear that. And, you know, I thought the part that was interesting when he was talking about, you know, the culture as far as around head, headquarters, how Dave was like, you guys created that culture, meaning like there was... Greg was never in the office. And I'm not saying as the CEO that that was okay for him to let that happen. However, I can see how that, yeah, he's a hands-off kind of somewhat, you know, thing, you know. Yeah, I'll be devil's I, advocate a little bit I, there. Go for it. I, I love this. Let's see. Um, it. Is, is that um, Greg and some of the accusations that have come out in that culture do not, those things didn't have to happen at a headquarters. They could have happened at an event. They could have happened at the okay, games. Okay, sure. They could have happened anywhere in the country that he was working with any of those female employees doing an L1, doing an L2. So it's, it's not a great defense just to say that Greg was never in the office. Okay. No, I, I hear that. That's a great point. Yeah. Yep. But I, I could also sense, though, I mean, I could hear that point of if he was specifically just talking about, you know, an actual area. Like, I can see that. Sure, there, there's a culture of people that hang out together. And, you know, because you become such close friends, you start, you know, crossing the line a little bit. And then that line gets pushed and pushed and pushed. And then, you know, you get challenged. But, well, and he, he almost made it sound like there was one known faction in at HQ because he kept saying like, well, you know, the IT department's different than, you know, the media department or whatever. And maybe I'm getting my podcast mixed up because I've seen so, yeah. so much press on this. Right. That was said. Remember? But I mean, maybe they all sort of know exactly who they're talking about and what group and cohort in that, in that office that they're, that they're talking about. And whether Greg was a part of it or not, I don't think matters necessarily. Big picture, I think it was probably happening with Greg and with this cohort, maybe, you know, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Yeah. Regardless, it is not acceptable behavior, yeah. whether it's the CEO or a group of people and allowed to go on. Yeah. So, um, but, but I do, th I, I don't want to rip Dave apart because I agree with you too, Amy, that like, he's the one that knows Greg the best and it's going to be hard for him uh, to rip him up and move forward. That's going to take time. And, uh, and, and Dave's distance. and Dave's all about loyalty. Like loyalty is very important to him. And, and that, I think that's where that struggle comes from, Amy, that you were right. describing. It's, 
you know, he's choosing his words so carefully because he knows that he has to, you know, sort of say the right thing. And, and he's trying to, he's trying to toe the line on both sides, really, I think is what he's doing. And that's, you know, human nature. I get it. He's a really loyal guy and he'll, you know, he'll defend that relationship probably regardless of, you know, what people think. And, and to be fair, Dave's work history is military and CrossFit. Yep. Like his business acumen is not what some of us have experienced in, in our jobs. Um, yeah. And so right. in the military, it's a whole different ball game. And, and HQ was run with one sole owner making all the decisions. That's not common. Well, and let's also bring up just if we're talking about HQ that they've only had one um, human resources person, one throughout the whole time. And then they, they're not, that person isn't there anymore either. So there was nobody <laughs> checking, checking the balancing there. Right. Right. It was a very non-conventional company. But I am ex- standards. But to the bright side of things, I am excited that Dave is jumping back into the games that he's given the, the authority to move them in a direction that is bigger and better than they've ever been. And making that connection to us, the common athlete. So speaking of the games, they've been delayed. They have been. (laughs) Again. At least one more time. Yeah. Uh, September 17th at the earliest, I believe is what the date is. I think it might keep moving too. If they make a decision to not have the open until February or March, they got a, they got a long runway to, to work with if they need to. I just feel bad for these poor athletes that are like trying to maintain their fitness and (laughs) don't know when to deload. And maybe we just tell everybody, listen, everybody take a break. Stop. Right. Stop what you're doing. Take a CrossFit moratorium. Like you're, you you will have a judge following you around to make sure you're not training. (laughs) Right. And then, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not great at California geography. Is Aromas way south? I don't think so. I think it's like somewhere between like LA and Sacramento. I'll tell you what happened yeah, to Sacramento. This is a long, <laughs> Sacramento's north. Uh, so weather could be a factor too. Mm. I got a question about the games. Do, no. If you were banned, is your band still in play there's new ownership new whatever guidelines listen leftress is done yeah i don't care about leftress my man uh ricky (laughs) oh he's got one more year i think um side note aromas is just south of san francisco okay and i know san francisco is pretty far north Mm. no i mean like if you were to cut california in half Top to bottom, Aromas is like just a little bit north. Okay. So I think now that we still are CrossFit, the the bands are going to stand. And I'm sorry, your your boy Ricky's going to have to wait a, a while. And his brother. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. their bitch mittens. Uh. <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> um. So yeah. So. I, I'm not optimistic for the games, even in September. Uh, I'm watching the news today. It looks like there's some regression with the COVID. Um, some things, some stiff uh, requirements are being put in place across the country. Uh, the NFL is canceling preseason games. It's, yeah, not looking I good. I can't handle any more of this negativity from you. So I, I know, guys. But what's seriously, what's going on in Ohio? I know in Delaware they have now – They've closed all the bars at the beach for, for the holiday weekend because there was a big outbreak at our beach town, which is like an hour and a half from here, um, maybe last week. And the governor delayed us going into like phase three, which would have been like a little more normal. They, they've halted that. And now at this one beach town, you have to wear a mask if you're in public anywhere, on the boardwalk, on the beach. The only time you can take it off is if you're in the water. Like so, that's some serious yeah. shit right there. So that is, that is the new trend. There are governors across the country um, saying that you have to wear a mask in public. I know the Dayton mayor in Ohio has mandated wearing a mask in public 
Um, our governor is supposed to speak tomorrow. Crazy. I don't know. Right. I mean, Where it's I not just, a, it's so not I just went on vacation to a beach town and there was, Where there's no, a big outbreak. There was no <laughs> break here. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh shit. So <laughs> I'm being very, very careful about going out at all. Um, at this point, just right. enjoying the view of the lake from my back deck. My daughter has been at the beach for a week, this beach town, and she's coming home tonight and I'm, and she's leaving again on Saturday and I'm considering just not even seeing her because <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford to get like my clients. This is no, can't do it. Yeah. Make her sleep in the yard. Yeah. Right. I did get to see baseball last night though. My son played baseball for the first time since October. Nice. Which I did not know he was a lefty. Oh yeah. Southpaw. He hit uh, 87 miles an hour last night on his fastball. He was looking Ooh. good. Nice. Yeah. Pretty cool. And afterwards, he got, a, he got a text from a local college here offering him a full ride, <laughs> at like a technical, a community college. Okay. Um, and, you know, he had to tell them that he was already committed okay. to, oh, to a okay. D1 school. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so, Sorry. He's not taking right. offers right now, but it was nice to, for him to get. It was a little ego boost for sure. All right, just to brighten Amy's mood. Someone's back. Con coming back on? Uh, Con, yeah. Con, cool. Con is not coming back on. Oh. We did talk about him extensively last <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> but Nicole Carroll is coming back. Yeah. Yes, she is. Such so, which is one of Scott's crushes, so that works. She's one of my crushes. Yeah, I mean, she's, like, I mean th them arms, my gosh. Yeah, she's just great. We love her. And she's so freaking smart. Yes. Yep. No, I um, mean, she is a major asset. So that, that tells me that kind of what we were talking about before, that this Dave defending Greg, uh, when Nicole leaves and then comes back. After he's gone. Right. And after talking to Eric. Um, but that, that's a big assumption on my part, and I shouldn't go there. Well, uh, but it should, it should quell people's fears or misconceptions about Dave, though, because she's coming back and Dave's still there. And like, for people that were saying, like, oh, Dave and Greg are one of the same and, and all that, the fact that she came back and Dave is still around, it, that makes me like Dave more. Yeah. Yeah. Not that I didn't like him before, but. Yeah. And it's, it's a huge asset. And if she's taking over training again, uh, yeah. so glad that my L2 is still on. <laughs> and she is back and that's all going to count for something swell. So yeah. I'm very happy about that. I know when that was announced, we all texted and we're all super excited that she was back. So the scholarship program that they've put in place, that is really an amazing project. Um, and I'm really glad that that's moving forward. Uh, and I've actually taken a screenshot of kind of uh, the rules and, and what's going to happen with that. So I'm going to put that up on the screen now. And the first place they're going to go do this is Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and it's basically giving a free level one uh, course to uh, underprivileged uh, homes where people can't afford the tuition uh, to take that. And this is phase one. Uh, they also announced that there's going to be a phase two with some mentorship after. Uh, to develop the, those that take the course and complete it successfully and help them uh, possibly become an affiliate owner uh, in the future. So I think that is, uh, that, that's a great program that Dave implemented um, and he should be commended for that. Uh, and I'm anxious to see, and, and my, gosh, my man crush, uh, Chuck Carswell is running that program. And I've, I worked with uh, Chuck at one of the regionals and I, I could not have more respect for a person than I do for him. Uh, he's just a stand up guy. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully local box owners in the area um, will take on those level one coaches, like as interns and, and mentors and things like that. I think that's really important. Not that they need to become affiliate owners, but if they can just be, you know, influential members of other boxes and, and in the community, I think that's a great start. Any other thoughts? No, no but I mean, one of the things I just was thinking about the, 
about this, like you sparked something in my mind um, when thinking about like the, the new ownership and with Eric and, and some of the things that I've heard from affiliate owners over the last couple of years is that they felt like they really get nothing from being a, an affiliate other than just that the name, right? And that some of the things that they have kind of wished for is that there would be some help from headquarters as far as like some seminars or some training as far as like how to build your business, how to build your affiliate, not just about the training of the methodology of CrossFit, but the actual business ownership of that. And so I'm wondering, I'd be curious to kind of watch and see if Eric kind of implements some of that. That would not I, surprise me if he did that. Yeah. I mean, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if they start creating some curriculum around it. Mm -hmm. You know, it probably won't be free, but I would imagine they, and they could partner with, people that are already really good at it um, in the community already. Because I just think, I mean, if you have 15,000 affiliates, like, like any, anybody could just go and pay the $3,000 and open an affiliate. Right. Um, but as far as to grow the business, which is, you know, with Eric being such this business, you know, minded person, that that's also just going to continue to then, leverage the company if we can you know help people who don't know anything about a business to build their individual business under the affiliate name um i think would be super beneficial it kind of sounds like that from his when him and dave interviewed each other how he's talking about there's the the original model yeah of what affiliates are and then maybe we look at some other ways that that we create a model for so they, they would have to have something in place to kind of show what that looks like too. So it sounds like Eric is kind of going in that direction. Yeah. When, if you look on his YouTube or not on his YouTube, but you look on YouTube for him, mm -hmm. you will find leadership seminars that he, he has yeah. done. Um, and I think that goes with what Charlie said, you know, it's not a one size fits all for every affiliate. For sure. Those who need the help can access the help. Mm -hmm. Those who just want to keep running it the way they've always run it can still do that. And the one thing that you have to know is that Eric has built businesses and sold businesses and he doesn't want anything to fail as part of this business. The more that the business as a whole grows, the more it becomes of value and then he can actually sell it off for a higher mm -hmm. price if he wishes to. So I think he's going to do all of the above. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. a whole different ball game from where we were. I can't wait. And I, not to, I know we're going to jump into kind of like some of our fun stuff here, but yeah. one thing that Dave did bring up that I forgot to mention that I loved is that basically you get graded in the open. If you guys did not hear this, yeah. but how you finish in the open, you are then called an intermediate CrossFitter, a beginner CrossFitter, an advanced CrossFitter, so that when you go to do local competitions, and they have an intermediate division, you have to be in that intermediate division. And it, you can't be an intermediate and jump down to beginner so that you can win all the prizes. Yeah. Which I thought was a very cool idea. It is very cool because sometimes you do wonder sometimes when you sign up for a comp, I, I, don't, I don't know, what should I sign up for? Like, cause sometimes they're so vague sometimes with, oh, well, if you can do these movements and you, maybe you can do most of them, but not all. like, I think that's a good, I, I like that. And it would yeah. reset every open. Mm -hmm. Plus it incentivizes the open again. Right. It gets people to go to the open. You just have to make sure that the competitions that you're going to are, you know, linked in somehow to CrossFit, right. To be able to mm -hmm. sort of sheriff that, that, that categorization. Well, Right. And for someone like me, if I could get out of beginner to intermediate, that's a, that is such a huge accomplishment. Right. Right. So I get to do the open and I can accomplish something that I couldn't do before. Um, or Charlie could go from advanced to pro. <laughs> and the cool thing about that too, is because the denominator of people in the open changes every year. So it's not necessarily easy to see in a linear fashion, like, Oh, I was, 36,000th this year and I was 34,000th that year. You know what I mean? But instead, if you're moving from intermediate to advanced or whatever, yeah, there's 
there's like some tangibles there. The only competition I've ever seen, I've ever seen that has actually like put limits or tell is the Festivus game. And they have said based on the open, if this is, if you were top this in the open, you, you cannot do Festivus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. So now on to some of our fun things. Uh, did you all watch the Titan games this weekend? I or this did. Week? I did. Margo crushing it. She has been so freaking dominant. Like I, I saw that in Danny Spiegel for the first region. I mean, she's just, Danny Spiegel is built for the Titan games. Yeah. Yeah. Leg strength, um, upper body strength. I mean, she has it all. Margo is such, she's a thinner athlete. Um, more in like I look Please. at her as someone who can run and someone who can do the the rowing, um, but man, she she drug that ball like it was nothing. Mm -hmm. Fast. Did um, we um? Did we get an answer on the hammer question? We have not gotten an answer back yet. <sighs> okay, okay Amy, let's pose what the question is. Okay, yeah, so I've been watching know. this every time. All right, and every time, most people, not everybody, but they get that hammer, and there is a pointy end and the, you know, the wider base, and almost all of them are using the wider base on trying to break the stone up, which yes, if you're hammering, usually you want a wider base, but if you are trying to break something open, why wouldn't you want the pointier side down? Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure the stage manager has rules on <laughs> which side they're supposed to use, but I'll be curious to know what the actual answer is. So I think once it's chipped, the, the big end is probably better because you want to hit the uneven surface and break it into bigger chunks. But initially, I'm with you. Like when it's flush, yeah. you want to drive that pointy end down through. Um, but I but, did. I threw that out to Margo. Hold on. But you guys are all assuming that like this stone, this slab is like an actual solid slab that has to be broken by this hammer. Think about right. that for a second. Is it styrofoam? Well, no, but I mean, is it manufactured in a way that it's supposed to break when you hit it a certain way? Or is it literally like a natural piece of stone? I'm just saying. It, it is a piece of concrete. Cement. I understand that. But do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's two, layer, it's two layers of it. But I, you're right. I don't know. It's a TV show. That's, That's all I'm saying. Like, I'm just... Listen, I need... I get it. I want to know too. <laughs> <laughs> she did say that we did find out more information on her Instagram because somebody asked a question about CrossFit and she said the previous owner um, of CrossFit uh, right, was, was very litigious. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. She's not wrong. But I love every time, like if I'm watching and them show like the new athletes that are on there and I, and I like maybe haven't heard of them, I'll like go to Instagram. I'm like, hmm, of course they're a CrossFit athlete also. Yeah. 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 Rhino Robbie. I actually knew him and yeah. uh, he did not do well. <laughs> I felt really bad for him. Yeah. All right. So it's that time of the week for our stupid question of the week. And this week I ask you all, what was your favorite childhood game? Okay. I have several um, follow-up questions regarding this. Oh boy. <laughs> is it just games in general or is it like board game, outside game? I mean, I don't know, just game? game. So in my, in my head, I thought outdoor game. Okay. Something physical because we're CrossFit, right? We talk about fitness. So I thought outdoor, but because I did not put that stipulation in the agenda, if you have another game in mind, I will accept it. Does any is anybody ready? I, I mean, I there are so many I liked I like just playing. I'm just gonna say chase. I mean, just running around chasing people, boys chasing the boys. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, do you know what's really sad is I have an active game and I have a non-active game, and they both the names of both of them are highly offensive in this day and age, and I can't say either one of them. I don't think. One of them was a game. One of them was a game outside where we would throw a football around, 
Oh, and the person yeah. that had he the would football. Smear somebody. Smear yes. somebody. Yeah, terrible, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. that was a game. And I grew up, my brother was three years older than me, and all of our neighbors were boys. And there was one boy who was my age, and all the other boys were older. And so whenever he got the ball, they would back off and let me do the smearing. And whenever he got the whenever I got the ball, they would only let him try to tackle me so I wouldn't get hurt. Um, but that was a really fun game, but super offensive name. So I don't even want to talk about it, but I just did. <laughs> so we'll have to come up with this a different isn't name for that. meant to bring us down. I know, but this is, this is terrible. So the second game, this is when I used to do ballet and we would have like six hour rehearsals and you had to be quiet when you weren't rehearsing, but like upstairs in a loft in a closet with like three other ballerinas stretching. And we would play something called Chinese Jacks. And again, I looked it up on YouTube. It's called Chinese Jacks. So I'm hoping that it's not offensive to anyone, but it's like little either like bean bags mm-hmm. or pillow things. And you would put them on the ground and you'd throw one up and you'd have to like grab a bunch and then pick it up and you do different stuff with it for hours. Mm-hmm. We would entertain ourselves playing that, like doing splits, you know, while we were playing. Well, I'll add games. another game to mine and, and hopefully I'll make things a little bit more even out then. So my favorite board game is the game of life, the game Same. of life. So, but here's how I've always played it. This is the truth. When, which this part bothers me. So like you get to certain parts and it makes you stop and it makes you do certain things, you know, like makes you um, get married or it makes you go to college, uh, buy a house. Yeah. Go those things. I always, when, if I'm like the banker or whatever, I'll say, do you want to marry a girl or a boy? Oh, I and love I, it. I let everybody gets to decide. And, and sometimes, you know, like we'll just change it up just to, to be whatever, just to be inclusive. So you offset my game. Thank you. That was good. Yeah, there you go. Um, I will tell you, Amy twinsy. Yeah. Life was my favorite game, my favorite board game. Yep. I didn't, I didn't name a board game, but it was my favorite. I Wendy's. love the spinner. The spinner made the coolest noise. Yep. I'm sorry, guys. All right, Charlie, you got one. Uh, well, outdoor, uh, you know, we play a lot of basketball, obviously. Um, play football, obviously. Indoor, I'm going to have to go with uh, either Lakers, Celtics on the uh, – Genesis or um, NHL 94 was always a quality one. Uh, you can get the to- Toronto Maple Leafs and hit that corner, score it every time. Uh, we, we could do this all day long with video games. I was going to say, that's a great category, video yeah. games next time. Right. I'm thinking now. Hmm. Yeah, Contra. I mean, it's just. <gasps> it's up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. VA start. Yep. VA select start. <laughs> Well, for me, um, growing up, you weren't an athlete until you could play kickball at a level with the big boys. And I grew up um, a pretty chubby fat kid that was not good at kickball until like third grade hit and I hit a growth spurt. And then all of a sudden I was really good at kickball. And that was like a huge accomplishment for me growing up. Uh, to finally be able to be out there with the athletes um, and do my thing. And so that was always my favorite outdoor game. Uh, indoor game, uh, I'll go board game. Um, and this is with my, my family right now. We love to play Ticket to Ride. So fun. And uh, it's just building train tracks across the country um, and trying to get build the longest train and intercepting other people from completing their train tracks and and missions and stuff. So we actually play that quite a bit and uh, have a lot of fun with it. So that's my favorite board game. Very cool. And now for Amy's favorite segment of the week, what's the favorite thing you saw on the internet this week? Go ahead, Amy. Okay. I did it. I did my, my homework. So, you know, I'm a teacher. And all teachers, if, if you're not a teacher and you don't appreciate this, then I don't, I don't get you. But there is this meme and it says, when I was a kid, I thought that laminating things was cool. Now I'm an adult and I know that laminating things is extremely freaking cool. So, <laughs> t- 
teachers be loving the laminating and it like I'll, I'll be at work and I'll be like, do you guys want something laminated? Just put it in my office. I'll laminate it. So being a teacher, we like laminating. I get okay. that. Next. So mm -hmm. mine, mine happened right before um, I got in the garage to do some things before this podcast. Um, there was actually a Facebook live um, with Nicole o O'Coin. Nicole O'Coin. She owns the company called Healthy Steps Nutrition and CrossFit HSN. She had a live um, interview with a guy named Adam Kramer, who is part of the Green Beret Project. So I'm going to put all this together for you guys. A couple weeks ago, um, I was selling end racism baseball tank, baseball t-shirts for, from Catalyst Fitness that the proceeds were going to go to the Green Beret Project. Now the gym that I used to um, coach at CrossFit Reconstructed is hosting a golf tournament with proceeds going to the Green Beret Project. Um, there's like four, three or four gyms in Delaware and one in St. Louis, Missouri, where these mentors, um, and a lot of them are either law enforcement or ex-military um, adults, go into inner city areas and pull these kids together and mentor them. They have weekly meals, like family meals, where they all get together and they just kind of eat and talk. Um, they're getting donations from Trader Joe's twice a week for food where they put like fresh food packages together for these families. Um, they, have a, they own a grass cutting company where these kids can like learn a trade. Um, they really set them on this path. It's such a cool thing. And, and CrossFit is the methodology that they use to, uh, to train these kids as well. So it's not just about like preparing for college or preparing for trade school. It's also about being physically fit. It's a lot around nutrition, which is why Nicole had um, Adam on but it was a super cool just um, intro into what that group does. So I would love to put the link in that if anyone wants to learn more about it, but such a cool initiative. Um, you know, doing exactly what we've, we're hoping is gonna happen as a result of all this crap that's going on right now is that we can use something that we love to help, you know, underserved communities and, and sort of broaden our horizons and cast a wider net and get people more involved in, in this awesome thing we call CrossFit. So that's mine. Nice. That's awesome. Charlie, you got one? Um, I don't know if we talked about this before, but um, Kevin Hart used to do a thing called cold as balls. And now because of the quarantine and everything, it's, called cold calls so it basically does the same thing but just calls people and it's a great 15 11 minute little thing you know he has random people on and just asks bizarre questions but uh it's a good pick me up during the day so I'm awesome gonna say that one. I love it, it's on youtube it is on youtube so we'll link that below sure there's right. also this slap fighting that i'm still enthralled with which, which I feel like you've mentioned this one before. A couple episodes ago. <laughs> yes. I got to get I on the slap, the slap train. Every now and then, there's new guys involved. There's people just getting their faces destroyed. I'm starting to catch on to the rules. You can't ear hole PS. It's just the whole thing. I love it. It's my new CrossFit. Well, mine is not as fascinating as that. Uh, mine's kind of serious. So, before I go into that one, if you haven't seen my Instagram, uh, on vacation, we did a thing where we tried to flip a dollop of whipped cream into the air and catch it in our mouth. Uh, I missed and it landed smack on my nose. <laughs> and it's on my Instagram if you want to check that out for a little laugh. <clears throat> but my, mine is, um, I was listening to Jenna Bush today and she was talking about how her grandfather, which would be uh, George H. W. Bush. George Sr. Uh, yeah, he um, had a list of rules that he lived by. And the conversation started with, have you ever met like that wise elder person that always wanted to give you advice and just it always impacted you? And so she was talking about her grandfather having this list and I can't remember the whole list, but I will post it below. And it is, it's like things like never talk too much. If you see a friend who needs help, 
help them. Um, things like that. And she told a story about how right before he had passed away, they had a dinner with the family and he couldn't hear very well and he couldn't speak very well because he was really, um, like he was 94, I think at the time. And so everybody's talking and that's something that he always enjoyed was conversation at the dinner table, but he couldn't hear and he couldn't participate. And he leaned down to her and he whispered in her ear, just remember, always enjoy the game. Mm. And that just hit me like so impactfully today. Um, and something that I just always need to remember, no matter what we're doing, always enjoy the game. Because we never know when we're not going to be able to enjoy it anymore. Uh, so I teared up a little bit and thought I would share that with, with everybody. Thanks. So that is our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. If you liked what you heard, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Don't forget we're starting the challenge on Sunday, Ooh. July 5th. So oh, yeah. get that Google Doc. Participate with us. Try to beat us. Leave the comments uh, and see if you can stack up with us. So uh, boys rule, girls drool. Girls drool. We will what kill else? it. You hate her man's club. <laughs> Sorry, I don't speak loser. <laughs> oh. And with that being said, this has been uh, the Clydesdale Fitness and Friends, and we'll see you next week. Bye. See ya.